Okay, hello, let's keep going with our project. So I'll open it. So this is a fresh project in Unity. I will keep my 16 to 9 ratio, it's fine. We are going to build for PC Mac Linux and let's get into it. So I right click and create some UI. We'll need some text, no, yes, we'll need some text. So let's add the text and just change some canvas settings so I can see it. I like to change it to screen space camera just to, you know, have everything in one spot. So we just move my camera in that slot. So my canvas is the size of the camera. And now I'll change it to scale with screen size. We're not going to use it really because this is only to show you how to connect with database, but I like to do it every time I create a new project. So we've got our text. We are going to display a value that will be stored in our database. So you just make it bigger. I would normally, if that was a project, you know, the production project, I will use probably TM Pro, uh, which is if you right click on the canvas UI, this is TextMesh Pro, but just to make it easy and simple, I will do it this way. So I will only change the background to the white one or some bright. This is what I prefer. I change the text to zero zero. And this might stay as it is. Let's add some button UI and button. I will just make it bigger. And our project will be to generate a random number. And this number will be saved in our database. So I call it, I just click on the text and call it generate number and increase the size of it. And we are pretty much done. So now we have to create some script. Right click and create C sharp script. I'll call it DB manager. And we can create a new empty object to hold our script. So I right click, create empty and call it DB manager. It could be a game manager as well, but it doesn't really matter. This is a simple project. We'll use only this one script to keep it simple. Okay, we've got it. So now I'll open it in Visual Studio. Here we have it. We are going to use UI, so I will add a library. So just Control D to duplicate it and UI, save it. We are going to connect with database, so we have to add some networking. So I duplicate it and add networking. That should be fine. We have to make a reference to our text to display the generated value. So I go on top and delete the comment and let's make it a serialized field text and I call it txt maybe the value. We don't have to assign anything to the button. So now we are going to create some methods. The first method will generate random number. So I'll call it void generate random number and to keep it simple we are not going to provide any parameters or anything the random number values will be like you know static the minimum and the maximum value will be defined here so let's just create a new variable i call it integer and let's call it rand and we assign a random range method to it. And let's pick the number from zero to, let's say, one million. Okay, this is one million, that's fine. But maybe let's put one million and one, so somebody can pick one million, because this is exclusive. So the maximum number will be never picked, so we have to add one more in order to pick it. Okay, we've 
got generate random number maybe I will make it so that it returns the value so let's do it like so integer and then return rand and now once it's returned we can display it in the takes the value but let's create this method that will create and you know do everything for us so it will be public because we call it from the button click so public void and let's call it generate task maybe or you know this will be our main method to do everything so generate generate number and here we want to generate random number that's the first thing and we want to assign it to some um, variable so let's call it int number and let's assign this method to it so once it's assigned we can print it in our text so let's do it takes the value and then text equals number and we have to change it to string in order to have it displayed okay so now i will call it this method from our button click so let me collapse it and click on our button and here we will choose on click now we have to move our db manager to it and choose generate number save it and we have to attach our text to this field so just grab the text and put it there i will play it and see how does it work generate number and here you can see that we get different numbers whenever we click on it so now once we generated it we want to store it in the database so let's do it let's go back to the code and let's maybe create a new method we have to do it with a enumerator because we need to wait till the number will be sent to database so let's put an i enumerator and let's call it maybe insert into database okay and now we have to create the form or first we have to set the url so this will be the place where our script sits on because we need to connect with the script and then the script are going to insert our value into the database so let's make string and url equals and we have to provide the path where our script is so in my my circumstances this is on www and then phoebesoft com and then it was app and then i can't really remember it was insert score php as i can remember but i might be mistaken we'll verify it later on so we have our url done now we have to create a form so we call it www form and then give some name to it let's call it a form equals and we are creating a new object out of it so new ww form and semicolon at the end now we have to add some field to this form so we are using form and then add field so we are going to use only one field and this will be our score so let's give a name to that uh, form as the tip suggests so first we have to add a name and then some value so let's add a score this name has to be the same as the name that we provided in our php script and i believe it was score and then we have to add the value and the value will be our number so actually in order to get it we can we can use a parameter 
So let's do it. Let's add a parameter in here and call it num. And here we will get this number. Because we are going to call this i enumerator from this method. So let's do it straight away to see it working. Start coroutine and here insert database. And here we have to provide this number. Like so. As you can see, we still get the squiggly line because we need to return some, because we need to yield return something. But let's wait for it a bit and add some more stuff. Now we have created the field. Now we have to send it. So we are typing using and then Unity Web Request. So we are creating a new object. The now we have to assign unity web request to it and using the post method and inside as you can see we have to provide the url and then what we are going to send we are going to send our form so we type form and now we want to yield return and we are going to return the send request. So send web request. Like so. So as you can see, the squiggly line is gone. So we are on a good path. Now we want to check if there was some error. So if www, because this is our object that we created here. So we are using it. And let's use this is network error. Or we can check always for HTTP error. And if once occur, we want to print this error. So www and error. If there is no errors, we can either display something here in our Unity. Or we can just, you know, display some message. So let's just display a message that everything was fine print so at the moment we are printing only something from our unity level but maybe in the next video i will show you how to return some value that is being produced on the uh, php script so yeah this is looking pretty much good everything should be working now so let's let's see if this is really working I will open my PHP admin. Let me just quickly do it. Okay, I'm in my online PHP admin. Here you can see our table. We've got how many? Four rows already inserted. So let me go to our app. And now if I press play and click on generate number, we can see in the console that record was added. So there was no errors. So everything should be working fine. Let me open our uh, admin and refresh it. And as you can see, the next row was added with that number. So let me just make it a bit smaller so we can see it straight away. I will generate next number 281 and now refresh it. And voila, here it is. And so on. Okay, so that would be it for this video. In the next one, I will show you how to modify PHP script a little bit and get some value out of it. And maybe in the next one, we'll be showing once we click generate number, we will insert this number into the table and get a maximum number or the highest score to be displayed beneath or something like that just to you know make it a bit more complex so you can see how it's being done so see you later